In this video, we're going to take a practical look at creating an MDL here in Substance Designer. We're going to create this car paint MDL. Now in this video, we're going to move uh, a bit faster than we did in the basics of MDL creation video. So if you haven't seen that, I would recommend checking that out or starting with that video first and then coming back and diving into this video. Okay, so let's just get started. What we're going to do is just create a new MDL. So in this case, I'll just right click the package here. I'll go to new and MDL material. For our template, let's just choose empty and let's give this a graph name of car paint. And then here we'll click OK. So now we have our material root. And so what we're going to need to do is get to our material surface. So we're going to do this here by creating here our material structure. And then here for the surface, I am going to create a material surface. And so now that I have uh, this in place, what I want to do is kind of think about uh, how I'm going to build up this, this, this material. And this is going to be a multi-layered material. And so with car paint, we're going to have a base paint layer, then we're going to have a flakes layer, and then on top of that, we're going to have a clear coat. So what I want to do first is just tackle this, you know, like one layer at a time. So let's take a look at the base paint layer first. So here, I am just going to come over to my material surface, and I'm going to grab a diffuse reflection BSDF here. So now that we have this guy, let's grab a color. So right off the tent input here, I'm going to grab a color and just quickly set a color value here. So we'll try something like maybe this. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is add a bit of a specular component to this. So I'll hit my space bar. I'll start to type in GGX, and I'm going to go with this first option, which is the GGX Smith. And here you can see that you know we have our roughness U and V. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just use a single value for that. So I'll hit the space bar, and I'll go to my float. So I've got a float parameter. Now I'm going to want to square this, so I can do that with the operator node. So I'll just come over and grab the uh, multiply node here. And I'll just plug this into both the X and Y value. Now, for this float, uh, I'm going to start with a, a base value here of about 0.5 for my roughness. And now uh, that that's been squared, I'm going to plug this here into the U and V roughness values here of this um, GGX node. So now that we have this, let me just move these guys out of the way. I'm going to combine my specular with my diffuse reflection. And I'm going to do that with a Fresnel node. So I'll hit the space bar, and we'll start to type in uh, Fresnel. And we're going to use this Fresnel layer. And we'll put our diffuse reflection here for the base. And we'll put our specular here for the layer. Now we need an IOR for this. So I'm going to hit the space bar again. I'm going to type float. And for this guy, we're just going to use just the kind of default 1.5 value here. And then I'm just going to plug this right into the IOR input. Uh, designer is going to uh, go ahead and place in for me this color node, which is good. I actually hit D on the keyboard there to undock that. But um, what I'm going to do is just hit D again just to dock it back. All right, so this right here is going to make up our base paint layer. So now that we have this, let's just make sure that we can view this here in our 3D view. So I'm going to take my output here of my Fresnel layer and just plug that into my material surface. And so here's what we have so far. All right, so let's grab these guys. Let's bring this down. And I'm going to set up a frame here for this. And for the frame, let's come in and let's just call this base paint. So now we're going to work on the flakes layer. So here, uh, we're going to come up to uh, just kind of an empty area here in our graph. And I'm going to hit my space bar. And I'm going to start with uh, GGX again. So I'm going to grab the first option, which is going to be our Smith uh, BSDF. So we have this guy in place. Uh, I'm going to need some roughness again. You know what? I'm just going to come back down here to our base, where I have my float and operator. And I'm just going to copy. So Control-C and Control-V control to paste that in. And let's take the output here of the operator and just plug that into the uh, U and V for our roughness. All right, so we have that in place. And uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, utilize our directional factor node. So here I'll come in and type for uh, directional factor and we'll bring this in. And again here what this is going to do is allow us to set 
a tent color for you know basically our F0 or what we're looking at at a zero angle and our grazing tent color. So uh, let's take our BSDF that we have, let's plug that in. And then I'm going to grab another color node. So hit the space bar, I'll start, I'll start to type in color and we'll grab here a color node. And we will plug this in here to our color. This here is gonna be our flakes color. So here I'm just coming up with just a value. Let's try something like, you know, maybe like this value that I have here. So we'll do something like this, maybe a little bit more orange like that. Okay. So now, you know, we have this in place. And now we need to blend our flakes here with our base paint. And we're going to do that uh, by using a, a weighted layer. So I'll start to type in weighted. And we're going to use the second option here, which is going to give us the inputs. Uh, so we'll choose this. So now we can take our two BSDFs here, and we can just blend these guys together. So let's take our flakes, and we'll plug this in. And let's grab uh, what we have for our base paint, and we'll plug this in. So two other options that we want to do with this. Let's select the node. And we're going to expose an input here for our weight. So I'm going to come right over and click the second button, which gives me this weight value. And so what I'm going to do here is just grab a float. So let's just left click and pull out a connection line and choose float. And I might just set this with a value of like maybe 2 point, uh, yeah, 0.25 here. So another thing that we can do here for the flakes to actually get the flake pattern, let me just move these guys out of the way here for now is we've got the node selected. Notice that we also have this normal uh, option here. So we don't see the input pin. So again, I need to click this second button here to make that visible. And now I can actually input in a normal. Now, this is where we're going to use a substance to drive this. So here, let me just save the package that I have so far. And in this tutorial package that we have, you'll notice there's a substances folder. And within that, there's a flakes substance. So let's take a look at that. I'm just going to double click to load up this flakes substance. This flakes substance, as well as the car paint that we're working through in this tutorial, was created by Nicholas Werman. And Nicholas is the product designer for Substance Designer, and he's also a tech artist here at Algorithmic. And so what this substance is doing is it's producing this pattern that you see here. And we're going to use this here for our flakes normal. So let's jump back over to our car paint MDL. And we'll just kind of zoom in on this area. And what I'm going to do is take that flakes substance. I'm going to left click and drag and drop to instance that here into the graph. Now, this particular substance has two outputs, a normal and a mask. We're only concerned with the normal. So let's just grab this normal output and plug it here into the normal input for our weighted layer. All right, so now that we have this, uh, let's now take this weighted layer and just feed this over here to our material surface. And so here's what we have so far. And what we're going to do at this stage here, let me just move this normal out of the way. We're going to come back here to the normal substance itself, and you'll see that we have you know, a host of parameters that we can work with. So number one, I'm going to change the tiling here. And I'm going to set this to maybe something like, let's say, 10. And so we're just going to tile this substance. Let's just zoom in a bit here so that we can really start to see these flakes. Uh, and then I can make some additional changes here. Uh, for instance, I, I think for the scale, uh, I might just set this down a little bit uh, and my scale variation. I'll pull this slider up here to one. And then here we're seeing our flakes. Uh, let's just adjust this slope a little bit. Okay, so we'll kind of leave it at this for now. And we can come back up to our you know, weighted uh, layer, our float value here, which is driving the weight itself. And I'm going to drop the value on that down to you know something around 0.12 or so. And so again, we'll just zoom in. We'll let iRay refine that a bit. And here we start to see you know, these flakes. And so that's going to work uh, for our tutorial so far. So here is our nodes. Let's just kind of organize these just so for visual clarity. And we'll select these nodes. And I'm going to click the Frame button here. And for the name, we're going to call this Flakes. So at this stage, we've got our base paint layer. We have our flakes. And we're blending those together using this weighted layer. And on the weighted layer, we have this float here, which is going to drive this. Here, let's do this. Let's pull this guy out so we can see that we have this float here. And so what we're going to do here is, like I said, we're driving this, this blending here in this weighted layer based on this float. And then we're also feeding in a normal here. Uh, and what we did, we had to expose that pen here on the weighted layer. 
So now we have that in place, we just need one more layer and that's going to be our clear coat layer here for our car paint. So let's start here with our specular component. So I'll hit the space bar and I'll start to type in GGX and we're going to grab again this first option. And so now we have this. Uh, we're also going to need our um, we're also going to need our roughness. And you know what? I'm just going to just borrow it here again from the float and the uh, multiply operator that I already have. So copy that, and we will just paste it here into our graph. So we're taking our roughness and we're squaring it. And yet again, we are just plugging this into the roughness U and V. So we have that. And now I'm going to hit my space bar and I'm going to grab a Fresnel layer. And we'll pull this guy down here just a bit. So we're going to grab here for our base. In this case, it's going to be uh, the mix here that we've been working on. So again, we're just adding layers up. We've got base paint and flakes. So that's going to be kind of the base. And then here for this top layer, let's just zoom in so we can really see what these connections are doing here. So at this top layer, this is going to be our clear coat. So what we want to do is we want to take the output from this uh, specular component that we're working on, and we're going to plug that in here to the top. Now, we also need to uh, grab here this IOR, so I'll hit the space bar, and uh, here I'm just going to start to type float. And for the IOR for this clear coat layer, I'm actually just going to use a value of 1.3, and we will plug this here into the color. And so now we have this in place. So let's do just a little bit of just kind of reorg here of our chart, or excuse me, of our node graph so we can really see, you know, how this is visually coming together. And we're going to take the result here of this Fresnel layer, and we're going to plug this into our material surface. Now, we need to start to make some changes here to what we have in our roughness values. So here again, I'm just kind of moving these nodes in place. And let's grab this here. Now let's just select these nodes, and I'm going to frame them. So I'll hit the Frame button. And for the title of this, we're going to call this Clear Coat. Now for our Clear Coat, I need to change this roughness, because at 0.5, that's, that's too rough. So we're going to drop this down pretty low here. And here, let's just zoom out in our 3D view just so we can get kind of like a more, you know, a broader view of, of how this material is looking on this asset. And so now you can see that we've got this kind of clear coat. We've got our base paint, and then we have our flakes with this. So what I'm going to do, like I said, is start to just kind of tweak my roughness settings. So with this uh, clear coat roughness, um, let's just set it at a number of, let's just do 0.08. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to expose this guy. So since this is roughness, I want to change my gamma type to sRGB. For my sampler usage, I'm going to use roughness. And I'm also going to use that for my display name here. So now let's take a look at some of our other parameters. Uh, here we have our weight. And now remember, this is driving the uh, weight layer that we have. And it's uh, in regards to our flakes. So this is the flake weight. So let's just expose this node here as well. So here for the gamma type, we're going to make sure we set this to linear because it's a data. And uh, here for our usage, uh, we actually don't need a usage. So I'm just going to uh, just delete that diffuse that's in there. So um, because this is just going to be a, uh, a parameter, it's not going to be linked uh, to any type of texture input. So we don't really need to worry about the sampler usage. For the display name, though, we will call this flakes weight. All right, so just kind of moving along here, we've got, uh, well, here's another roughness value. Here we're in the section where we're looking at our flakes. And uh, here we can just drop that value as well. And so uh, 0.5 might be just a little too rough for these flakes. So we'll maybe try something. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to try um, maybe just 0.35. Uh, and I'm just going to right click, expose this node. And so here we're going to set this to linear. And you know, now that I'm thinking about it, again, these are just going to be parameters. We just want to have this as a slider. We're not, we have no intention of actually just trying to set this as a, a substance. So I'm not really going to worry about the usage. Let's leave this blank as well. And here we'll call this uh, flakes roughness. Let's go back and just do that same thing here for our clear coat. So we go into this guy, usage doesn't really matter, but we're just going to leave it blank for now. So we'll just do that. 
Uh, and then we'll come back here to our base paint. Uh, and this guy here will do the same thing. We're going to expose this parameter, make sure that we set this to linear, and the display name is going to be base paint roughness. And while we're at it, let's come over here to our color. Well, we will expose this as well. And we're going to make sure that we set this to linear. And for the display name, we'll call this base paint color. All right, so when we just kind of zoom out here on our graph, you can see that you know here is what we have for this car paint material. So like I said, we just had the three layers. We've got our base paint, then we have our flakes, and then we have our clear coat. Uh, one of the important aspects here is that you know when we're looking at this, you can see that in the case of the base paint, we're using a diffuse reflection. And here we have our specular reflection, and we're blending those with a Fresnel layer based on an IOR value. Uh, and then we just have a roughness that's squared. Here for our flakes, what we're doing here is we're using, again, a specular reflection here. So this is uh, GGX BSDF. And this time we're using the directional factor, which allows us to take a BSDF, and then we can set basically the normal tint, which is going to be like the F0, and the grazing tint, which is going to be like at 90 degrees. In our case here, for the flakes, we're at the normal tint, we're setting a color value for this. Uh, and then for the grazing tint, we're just letting this go to white. And while we're at it, we could just go ahead and expose this guy as well. So this here is going to be sRGB. And the display name is going to be flakes color. And you know what? Let me make sure I did the, the color down here right because I'm thinking, yep, I set that to linear. That was wrong. It needs to be sRGB. So all color values, you know, uh, values that we're going to see with our eye, like diffuse reflected color, or in their case, uh, the reflection color from those flakes, those always need to be sRGB. So sorry for the confusion on that. Um, okay, so then what we did is we mixed basically our base paint and our flakes uh, with this weighted layer. Uh, the weighted layer is, again, we've got the base BSDF and the layered B BSDF, which is our flakes. Uh, we are controlling that here with a weighted float value, which we have just set here. Uh, and then we've taken a substance uh, here that's generating our flakes pattern, and that's being fed here into the weighted layer in the normal input. Finally, we added a clear coat layer on top of that. So again, we use just a specular component here. So it's this, this GGX BSDF node. Uh, we're using our roughness squared again to that. Uh, and then what we're doing here is we're just feeding this into a Fresnel layer. And so, again, it's just adding a Fresnel layer on top of what we had. We took our combined base paint and flakes weighted layer as the base. Our clear coat becomes the layer on top of that. And then that's being driven here. Let me just undock that color so we can see this a little bit more clearly. So we'll move our color up like this. Well, here, let's do this. So then we just have a float value that's being interpreted as color. And we're using this as a 1.3, and that becomes our IOR here for our Fresnel layer. Finally, all of those layers combined are now being passed into our material surface, which is then being uh, piped through our material structure, and then finally here to our material root. And that's producing our car paint MDL that you see here. So now that everything is completed here with our MDL, let's save this. So I'm just going to right click, and I'm going to export this as an MDL module. And I'm going to place this here into just my documents MDL folder that I've created. And we'll just call this car paint and hit save. And yes, we'll replace it and click OK. All right, so now that we've had that set up, what we could do is if you come over to your materials, uh, you could actually go to your definitions and you could load this back in. So we could just load this MDL direct directly. Another thing that we could do is just come over here to our preferences and here for our project. I'm going to scroll down here towards the bottom where you see MDL paths, and I'm going to add a new path, and I'm going to just keep it here at this uh, documents MDL. It's just a folder that I set up, and I'll click select folder here, and I'll click apply and OK. So now if I go to materials and I go to definitions, underneath MDL, these are going to be custom MDLs. Now, I happen to have iRay for Maya installed, so I'm getting a lot of these here. But here at the bottom, you'll notice that I have my car paint. And so I'll select my car paint. And then here you can see that I've got all my parameters. So for example, we could change here 
uh, this this color value. Let's change our flakes as well. So let's do something like this. And actually, let's change our geometry here. So let's set this to sphere just so we can see this a little differently. Again, here for our materials, uh, definitions, uh, MDL, and I'm going to choose my car paint. So we'll zoom in. And once more, let me just change my color values here. And here, here you go. So that's going to conclude our two-part series on creating an MDL here within Substance Designer 5.5. In this second video, as you can see, we went through a practical example. We created a car paint MDL, we saved that as a module, and then we were able to import that back in here to our material definitions.